Okay, it's that time of year. We're starting to get gravel. So, I have to start running samples. And this is what we're getting this year. And this particular outfit, I, I trust their gravel. But I have to run a sample. But I don't have to do this, but it's something I do for my own peace of mind. Now what I do, I let the stuff dry overnight and then I've got a whole series of screens that I run it through. And once I get it sorted, you know, I sort out the different size rock and figure out how much of the, the fines and what then I'll do, I'll actually do a sediment test on the fines to see what percentage is sand and what percentage is clay. And hopefully don't have dirt in it. Oh, sometimes we get some that's got nothing but dirt. But it'll vary a lot. You know, I know if you talk to these people, you know, they'll argue, they'll claim it's all the same. And it'll meet that specification. But that's a wide window in them specifications. Just saying it's class five is not going to tell you a lot. You know, because you've got a big window there. And it makes a huge difference, and this is the biggest part of our budget is spent on gravel. So I'm always running samples so I know we get the best deal. And it's always interesting, you know, I, I end up making these charts and graphs, but that's the easiest way to explain it to somebody else. But when you go through this, then, I mean, you can... I folded it so you can't see who comes from where, but I take samples from all over. Anytime I see anybody dumping gravel, you know, could be in a whole different county. I'll grab a sample so I can run it and find out where it's from, you know, and, and what they're getting. But a lot of times the, the bigger rock, well, you know, there's a big difference in there too. Because you don't really need a lot of the, the big rock you know, if you got too big a rock, it just flies off the road and you don't get any use out of it anyway. The rock that really does most of your work is this, you know, like a quarter to a half. You get anything over about three quarter, it's hard to stay in place unless it's like this. This fractured rock, that's what you look for. But these round rocks, they don't do a hell of a lot of good. They're better off using them separately, you know, it's better if they're screened out of there actually because they don't do you much good unless you get really soft ground. But the consistency of the fines makes a huge difference. You know, if it's sand, you'll have nothing but washboards. If there's too much of the, the dirt in there, what'll happen is it'll, it'll get hard as a rock and you can't break it up again. I like a mix that you can actually break up, you know, to cut washboards and ruts and stuff out. But we're lucky in that we found uh, a good gravel supplier and it's nice that we're getting gravel in early, but Gravel is a funny thing. Uh, there's a basic tenet in economics dealing with, you know, because the cost of gravel isn't high, it's a transporting it. You know, you're, you're paying the cost of transporting it. So what you really look for is the best gravel you can get. It turns out, you know, that the like say, this is hard to explain because it's counterintuitive, but like the best beef you're going to get is going to be in New York. The best seafood is going to be in the middle of the country. It isn't going to be on the coast. But the reason behind it is only the best quality stuff is worth shipping any distance. So this gravel costs us slightly more, but it's worth the shipping. But like I said, it's counterintuitive, but that's the way it works. You know, beef and seafood, yes, you'll get the freshest in the location where they come from, but not the highest quality, because it doesn't pay to ship the lowest quality, it only pays to ship the highest quality. But this is excellent gravel. Had really good luck with this stuff. A lot of fractured, it's a really good mix, but there's, it's just a very hard thing to do to buy good gravel. Uh, to find somebody who does a good job. And then there's a matter of consistency. Uh, like the one supplier, 
the, the drivers themselves loaded out of the pile. You know, they had to get out of the truck, run the payload, or load it up. I, I was always getting really inconsistent loads when I ran the samples. You'd swear it wasn't even coming from the same place. The problem is, when the gravel is piled up, it comes off a conveyor out of the crusher, it sorts itself in the pile. Now, if somebody is just taken out of one area of the pile, they could be getting all rock, or they could be getting nothing but the light stuff. Now, if you've got a dedicated loader driver, he knows enough to work a pile, to work the face of the pile, so you get a good mix in there. I know there was one county that had a problem one year. They had one section of a long stretch of road. One section completely fell apart. When they looked back, they found out, oh, that was the day that their dedicated loader operator was on vacation and they had somebody filling in for him. But that made that much difference, you know, just having a good loader operator. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But very tough for somebody, you know, if you go into a place and, of course, oh, their gravel is great. They all say their gravel is great. And some of them put out really crappy gravel. Now, this particular outfit, they really know what they're doing. They, they really got this tuned down. Very consistent. You know, when I make the charts and this, the numbers, I, I can run six of them and they'll bury by just one little number. You know, they're always really close. Whereas that other outfit, man, they were all over the place. You never knew what you were going to run into. But you want, you know, this kind of rock. You want a lot of that fractured stuff because that locks in there. That stays in place. But, ordering gravel is an art, and, you know, I mean, we have to look at it close because it's the biggest part of our budget goes for gravel. But, you know, for a regular, somebody getting gravel in their driveway, you're kind of at the mercy of the, of the gravel people. And now, I always tell you, theirs is great, and it usually isn't. It's the ones that don't make a big stink that just make good gravel. And you know, there's also even the matter of the drivers, how good the driver is. You know, some outfits don't pay their drivers decently. They have to keep getting new drivers all the time. The drivers never get good at dumping loads. But like now, this outfit, I've been dealing with the same drivers for quite a few years. And they put it exactly where they should put it. No big clumps, no thin spots, because, you know, a thin spot in a road ruins the whole road. You know, it's got to be an even thing. And I like to I like to windrow it up and then spread it out with a grader to try to even any problems. With these people, I don't run into any problems. I windrow it up, but I don't see the problems. With the other guy that kept switching drivers all the time, I could come back two years later and I could tell where every truck dumped. You know, it just never evened out. It was thin and thick and thin and thick. So, I know gravel, I know what I'm doing with gravel, but for somebody, you know, buying gravel for your driveway, you are at somebody's mercy. Okay, this stuff was pretty much dry enough. I was screening out at least the coarser material. But, okay, here's of the sample I took today, the rock, how much, you know, and it's all this nicely fractured up stuff. This is from the other place. This is how much rock was in the sample. You know, there's, there's a big, big difference there. Well, and even on this stuff, you know, the next size down, there's still, there's more here. What this, this outfit had was a hell of a lot of this stuff, you know, the, the fine stuff. And this actually isn't even so bad because this has got some clay in it, but they were adding in clay to bring it up to that standard. The worst, at one time they were adding this in. And this is actually like silt, like right out of the river. This was bad stuff, but they added that in to get those numbers up. You know, they because they had had some trouble with some government contracts where it got rejected because they didn't have enough of the fines in there because there again the government is going by a number not quality a number you know and that doesn't the two don't correlate 
Okay, here's another telling thing. When I ran the fines on this, okay, this is how much fines was in this sample. And you can see it's got a kind of a lightish color to it. Now, this is the other sample from the other place. Much darker because it's got dirt in it. And, it's, you know, half of, of your yard of gravel is going to be that fine stuff. Now, you know, don't get me wrong, fines are necessary because they're what bind it together. But when you're just graveling a road, you know, re-graveling a road, you've already got plenty of fines. You know, you know, you you can regain the fines by pulling the shoulder, the fines that wash off and some dust off. But you can have too much fines, and, and that's too much fines.